Hey there, and welcome to episode number 10 of Dial a Drummer. I'm Brian Stevens. I'm Shannon Corey. And, you know, we're just a couple of working drummers that uh, jump in front of a few cameras once a week to talk to you about stuff related to drums. So we can nerd out on our drumming conversations. Yeah. You want to tell people what you did this weekend? Yeah, I had a busy weekend. I had a nice show with the Dan Random Band at uh, Eddie Owens Presents at the Red Clay Theater. Uh, it was put on by the Gwinnett Public Library. It was a lot of fun. <clears throat> and then yesterday, Sunday, did my church gig. and then People had a, didn't read books while they were listening. No, to but Dan did. Oh. Because, <laughs> yeah, because See, that's important to it tell is people. Important, but it's, he wrote a science fiction book, yep. and he's got a CD to go gotcha. with it. So we do both in the show, which is kind of cool, something different. It was, you know, it's a great listening room, so it was a lot of fun. And then yesterday, church gig. Had a big video photo shoot for the new corporate band that I'm jumping into called Big City Rhythm. So coming to a town near you soon. Very cool. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I had a really important gig that got canned. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good, man. That's that's one thing that you learn is that uh, there are times in life, it doesn't happen a lot to me, but there are times in life when somebody books a gig and they're going to pay you really well and the floor will fall out. On Monday. Yes. And the gig will go away. I'm sorry. That is what it is. It's frustrating though. But that's one of the reasons why I keep my income streams between the studio and educational products and uh, with the new in-ears and all the, something we're going to roll out at the end of the show today. The reason why I have these multiple income streams, and we're going to do a show on that eventually. Right. Uh, the reason I have these multiple income streams that are all around music and drums and audio and, and the things that I have strengths in or skill sets in is so that if something falls out, I always have something I can immediately. It's like a it's like a Lego set. Sure. <laughs> and what, except one of my Legos goes bad. Just replace it. Yeah, you just put another Lego right there. Problem solved. Mortgage stays paid. Right. Nobody repos my car. That is important. Kids, gotta yeah. pay your bills. I, I I'll be real honest a second. In 1998, I think it was. My wife would know exactly the date and the time. She'd know what she was wearing right uh 1998 i think i had my car repoed <laughs> because of this kind of thing you know right. that really important gig you were counting on uh falls out and then all of a sudden whoop, there goes the car payment and uh, you do that about two or three times and they come get your car <laughs> they don't like that <laughs> and they come in the middle of the night when you can't say no right <laughs> and uh yeah so that taught me very very early in my music career that uh, I've got to have other things ready to go in the queue in case something happens. Sure. You know, best laid plans of mice and men. Justin Bieber's guys here. We're talking about Justin Bieber on our show, guys. Can you believe it? Um, Brian is, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he basically like canned the tour. Right. And there's all of these people, musicians. Um, yeah, they're relying tech, on that income because they've crew. allotted, you know, however long that tour was or what the rest of the duration. Duration was all that income, all that time immediately gone. Just gone. Yeah, that's so, hard. That's not what we're talking about today, but uh, definitely a topic to put on the, the whiteboard. And uh, thanks for so much for tuning in today. And uh, we want to let you know that we're live every Monday. Four o'clock was such a great uh, period of engagement last week. We decided to do four o'clock again this week and see if we can keep that engagement high. And uh, have you guys talking to us and chatting with us in the chat boxes and. Uh, and all the different social platforms. Make sure that you try and catch us on Mondays. Uh, we post incessantly. <laughs> I post incessantly about when we're doing things and what we're talking about. So if you'll follow us on all the different different social platforms, uh, we are Dial a Drummer pretty much everywhere. Yep. Uh, on Twitter, on Periscope. Facebook. And, yeah, Facebook. And uh, on YouTube, we really still need people to follow us on YouTube because once we get to a hundred subscribers, we can secure that name dial a drummer on YouTube. Come on and people help it, us out. It's sort of like the triple crown of social media. <laughs> you know, you've made it when you get a YouTube page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're really trying to win the Kentucky Derby at this point, And that's YouTube. And uh, you can help us do that just by hitting the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. If you search for dial a drummer, you'll find us instantly. And, uh, but wait, there's more. Oh, 
You can also come to the website hey, at dialadrummer.net. You, you're a pro. <laughs> Yeah. We've got all the platforms covered now. Man, the website blew up this week. Nice. It was awesome to see the numbers just tick, 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 all the way up with people that came to the website to check it out and then people that were listening because I, I had I thought at this point that most people that had seen the show had seen it. Sure. But uh, we had an exponential number of new people that came to know the show this week because of the audio podcast. That's fantastic. And you can search for us on iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere you get an audio podcast, you can get Dial a Drummer now. So uh, make sure you stay with us, stick with us, listen, watch every single week. Uh, you can email us if you have any questions. Today's topic we're talking about today, um, drum practice strategies, came directly from an email that we'll read in Get just a second. Get started on that, yeah. And uh, you can also hashtag us, uh, hashtag Dial a Drummer, on every social platform. And if you've got a comment, if you've got a, uh, a question of any sort, uh, and really, by all means, Share us with everybody you know. And we appreciate you tuning in and taking the time because we know there's a lot of stuff out there that you can be checking out. So thank you for your time. And I like to think we're the most important thing that happens on Monday. That might be presumptuous of me. That's okay. I like the attitude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the most valuable, important thing that could possibly be happening right this moment. Right this moment. If you're a drummer. If you're in our hits. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we uh, we are talking about drum practice strategies. Yes. And because what we're talking about is about your brain as well as your hands and feet, we have a new sponsor this week that I have to tell you about because this is a, this is a, a product that I've been using for a, a good while. Alpha Brain by On It. If you go to dialadrummer.net slash brain, you can check out this amazing product that I've been using Alpha Brain now for probably four years. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, I was trying to think, is it four or five? I'm right on the cusp. So now we know the secret. Do you You're know like what, a walking computer. Do you know what nootropics are? No. Nootropics is this whole science of taking herbal uh, things that exist in nature and finding whatever cognitive or physical enhancement properties that they have. Is that what's need. legal in Colorado? No, that's a different kind okay. of thing. That's a totally different kind of thing, actually. <laughs> I don't know if that helps you or not. It <laughs> I'm might, sorry. I know I it would make me hungry if I did it. At least that's what I've been told. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw you off. <laughs> but, uh, well, see, that's the great thing about nootropics is um, these aren't, Drugs. Right. This is nature. Scientists have really, they've dug in deep into how valuable nature is sure. to us. Because before we had pharmaceuticals, before we had uh, all these different uh, synthetic things that you can put in your body to, you know. Yeah, for everything. If you've seen, if you've seen the <laughs> Limitless movie, you know, it's. Uh, As we it's, sit here and drink energy <laughs> drinks. <laughs> Ca caffeine uh, is, uh, is Caffeine in a can. Yes. Um, before all of that. When people were in touch with nature and in, in touch of in touch with um, what the land can do for you, mm -hmm. there was a there were a lot of smart people. I mean, you think about shaman and all these really smart spiritual people and all these, you know. And this is part of the reason they were that way, you know. So, uh, tell you what, do instead of me going on a long diatribe and wasting your time, just go over to uh, dialdrummer.net slash brain. You can read up about um, Alpha Brain. You can see what it'll do to help uh, increase your your memory, your uh, brainwave optimization, your focus on complex tasks. And I've found that it even helps me with my mental speed processing uh, in response to what happens on a gig. I got gotcha. you. So uh, you take a lot a day, or no? I just I take two in the morning. Okay. So two of these things in the morning, and if I have a really, really heavy work day or I've got a really big gig that night after a long work day in the studio, I'll take a third one about maybe five or six o'clock. And you don't get, it's not like horny goat weed or something. Sure. It's you more get like the a truck brain stop. fuel. Yeah, it's not like a white cross or some things that truckers take. You don't, you don't really. Why do you know that? <laughs> 
Oh, there's so many things to my story. <laughs> if you only knew. Uh, anyway, there, uh, you don't get that jittery, crazy feeling. You don't get all this weird stuff. Because it's all natural. It's all natural. It's not an amphetamine type thing. It really just helps to unlock. It, it's like having uh, an accelerator for how you your brain works. Nice. Okay. You know, it's it's like a it's like a sixth gear for the sports car that is your brain. That is not their slogan, but I'm going to talk to them. That's about a good one. I like that. That's <laughs> so, a good one. Uh, so totally ties into what we're going to get into. Yeah. So and that's why I wanted them to be a sponsor and contacted them to uh, to sponsor the show today because I love the product and it really does help me with what we're talking about today, nice. which is drum room practice strategies so we uh we had an email that uh that came from bill in portland oregon this week who's been watching the show the past month nice hi bill and, uh, you want to you want to read bill's email for everybody sure <clears throat> says hey guys love the show thanks for pack packing so much actionable practical knowledge into every episode this question may send you down another rabbit hole but can you help me with my practice time I've been playing drums for about 20 years, but I've never felt like my practice time leads to noticeable improvement. Over a long period, six months to a year, I see that I get better, but the pace seems to slow and the changes aren't very large. How much do you guys practice? How do you decide what to practice? Do you have specific books you rely on? And how do you measure your progress or your improvement? Those are all great questions. Yeah, yeah. So it's this a is, loaded. It's a topic. <laughs> this might take us six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Strap in, folks. We're going to be here a while. Well, Bill, thanks for the question. And this is a uh, what is loaded. So tell me, how much do you practice? I still try to practice at least an hour to two hours a day. Okay. At least. I mean, you know, life gets in the way and you have real life to deal with. Right. Um, so I'll jump right in. So like starting to tackle part of Bill's question. Um, one way to progress quickly or something that always helped me out is breaking and get, breaking into segments. Okay. You know, so let's say you have an hour. Okay. You could do, you know, three 20 minute segments. Right. Which is a, you know, a do very you have basic. Like a specific time that no. you practice. No, no. Uh, do you have uh, any, any kind of, do it's you usually, have a regiment usually, that's set or? As far as a daily routine, right, right. I do as far as the practice routine, I, but as far as like, do I get up at, you know, go to the practice room at seven o'clock every day? No, it's, I don't know. I find at certain times a day I'm fresher mm -hmm. than, you know, cause I feel like if you do it as a routine right, then it becomes boring. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you do it in the morning, one day, the afternoon, the next day or the evening, based on what your day is like, you know, we have session work all the sure. time. We're running studios or playing on sessions having that same time frame every day is a little challenging. Right. How about you? Uh, I have the complete and opposite different answer for that question. <laughs> okay, here we go. Cause you're going to get a lot of info yeah. on these questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so really I, I'm, I'm pretty methodical about the stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, anything I do, I try and be very methodical about it, but I do, I really do try and, I start with my practice time before I even go to practice. Okay. Before I sit down to practice, I'm already thinking about what uh, what I need to do to optimize the time that I'm going to have. I'm like you. I do an at least an hour, four to five days a week. If I can get two hours in on a day, if, if the workday will allow for it, I'll do two hours. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be like Steve Smith and do four hours a day. But uh, that's just not my life. Sure. If, if I had the time, I would certainly. No, absolutely. Do it. I love doing it that much. So I, I immediately one of the first things I did when I started looking at optimizing my practice time is I started to look at my my brain cycles and uh, I tried to figure out what would be the best time of day for me to concentrate at that high a level. If I'm going to practice in the way that I think about practicing, which is a very methodical, purposeful, uh, determined regimen of things to do that are based on goals, that are based on um, different things that I've picked out to work on. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to concentrate at that high level, I needed to find when I was the freshest, essentially. And for me, the mornings are the best. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm up by 7.30 or 8 o'clock, then 
Uh, I have a little morning ritual that I do that includes some free writing. And then by 9, maybe 9.30, I'm in the practice room. Okay. And that's when I'm my absolute freshest mentally. It's also when my alpha brain really starts to kick in. <laughs> that kind of helps. There's too, a secret. You know? That kind of helps. But um, so I really try and, and, and make sure that I'm optimizing when my brain is going to do its best work for that kind of detail-oriented stuff. Mm-hmm. I also find for me that if I keep it at a regular time and a regular uh, increment, if it's it, – Tuesdays are the only weekday I can't do that because I have some meetings. Right. I had some meetings, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so really noted. that was a yeah. So the, um, plug. <laughs> so there's uh, every other weekday. Uh, I'm you know Monday through Saturday. I generally will have that morning time open, mm-hmm. and I find that that regularity ensures that I'm gonna sit down and do it. And with some of these other processes that we'll we'll talk about as we go, um, because I have a method and I have a very regimented way of going through, and I know even before I go to practice what I'm going to be doing, it doesn't get quite as it doesn't get boring for me. Mm-hmm. But that's because I put a lot of planning into it. It's it's sort of a, like strategizing for battle is essentially what it is. And for me, I'm actually energized. I'm like, I'm going into battle. Right, I'm right. going gonna to tackle this crap I can't do, and I'm going to get good at it. <laughs> right. And eight years later, I'm going to know how to do it. <laughs> and so then I play Soul Power by James Brown for two and a half hours, and I still stink at it. But <laughs> but you practice I'm it for better, two hours. I'm, I'm better, better than, than you were two hours ago. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I definitely do. I, I, I've really looked at what really helps me initially is I had to pinpoint when I can concentrate. So the time of day is a big thing for you. Huge, huge. Uh, There are times when work gets in the way or traveling gets in the way. If I do an out of town gig, um, unless I happen to have a late checkout, uh, most of the time, if I do a road gig, there's an eight or nine o'clock lobby call. So I'm not going to be practicing at nine. I'm going to be on some kind of shuttle going to an airport. And so I can't do it then. So what I will do in those cases is I will, uh, I've looked at what my other cycles look like and I try and find that peak in the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually there's a little bit of a peak right before about four o'clock. And I do have a weird peak about 11 p.m. Uh, I get some of my best work done from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And so if I've got to practice, the great thing about having a studio like I do that's soundproofed enough that that uh, they don't hear it much in the house and the neighbors don't hear us at all. Right. At 11 p.m. if I want to go practice, I can. Right. And you've got... I've got the same... You've got a whole place that's completely separated. Right. So you can go anytime. Yeah. Which is nice. And that's why I don't have a specific time of day because I do have the luxury of being able to go when it... I'm when I feel like I'm freshest and go in and put in the best right, time. Right. But I also like the spontaneity of changing it yeah. up daily. And, and that's, that's a very artistic way of, of thinking about your practice time. You, you're sort of running with the muse. Yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. doesn't work for me because what happens with me if I don't set the time is just like my gym time that I have yet to set. Uh, kind I of goes away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get to the end of the day and I figure, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. I got some. Uh, no, I totally important. get it. It, it really, for me, is about prioritizing practice as so important that I'm not going to let anything else get in the way. Nice. Um, the other thing that helps me is before my practice session, I really do decide what I'm practicing. Mm-hmm. If I'm trying to be productive, I'm going to think about what am I trying to practice? And, and I'm hitting it on a few different fronts. Most people, when they think about practice, they just think about paradiddles and right. uh, coordination and all this kind of stuff. They're thinking about the technical development. And that is a consideration. That's one aspect yeah, of it, it absolutely. It's one aspect right. of a much broader picture. So I, I try and outline some goals for my technical development and for my musical mm-hmm. development. That's a thing we're going to hit in a second yep. that's important about practice time and important about learning an instrument because uh, this isn't necessarily an athletic thing we're doing. No. It's a musical thing. All our goals should be aimed towards yeah. being musical. So I have to think about what am I trying to do to enhance my musical development, right. to push me forward as a musician. And sometimes I'll uh, 
tack on extra time at the end of my, we won't talk about it today, but I'll tack on a little extra time at the end of my drum practice for things like piano. Right on. Another instrument. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then some of the other areas that I think about, there are times when I go to sit and practice that I'm purely practicing as prep for a gig. Yeah. If I've got, if I got hard music, you've got some hard music you just had to play. Yeah. And I do have my, even though my time frame is different, I'm very specific in how I go about it. And I have, I have a whole system that I, I've got a name for it and everything. I, I call it the three P's. Okay. It's called playtime. Yeah. Is the first segment. Cool. Practice time is the second segment. Okay. And performance time is the third segment. Okay. So playtime, you go in, you warm up, you practice, you're right. playing free, sure. if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good way to get moving around the drum kit. You know, whether you're playing a four piece, five piece, 18 piece, whatever, right. just moving around the kit, warming up, <clears throat> body flow. And then practice time is more specific click practice. Right. Book practice. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. The more of the detailed, very focused thing. And okay. then what I call performance is when you're actually running a show. Yeah. You know, working on drum solos, if you are lucky enough to get those in a show. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I break it down. So yeah. I'm very specific and I, and I am very methodical about what I do in the time. Yeah. There, there's other things that, that I think about before I practice that steer where I'm going. Um, if I'm inspired by some music I've heard, sure. I'm inspired by a drummer, these are all things that I do before I even get in the practice room that help me really focus down on what's what the goals are. And occasionally I'm fixing a problem. Sure. Uh, I've had some problems with uh, note compression in my left hand. Basically, if I'm playing two or three notes in a row, mm -hmm. I've noticed a tendency. I had a teacher that noticed it for me, and I noticed it when I really drilled down that I tend to play that second note a little quicker if I'm playing a diddle. And so that would be an instance of me knowing ahead of time that part of my practice time is specifically dialed towards working on the spacing of the notes right. so that I'm not compressing the, the space. The finesse side of it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Let's, uh, I tell you what, dude, we Let's, got some callers oh, yeah, on the line. Absolutely. There is a caller in the 570 area code, and uh, let's find out who this caller is. Who am I talking to right now? Uh, hello? Hello, who we got on the line? Uh, my name's Dan. Hey, Dan. How are you, Dan? Hey, We're, so, the ear growth drummers? Yes. Um, have you ever thought about getting a real job? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why we have calls. These are screeners. real jobs. That's why we're doing what yeah. we're doing. So I'm going to are... mute our friend. And I... No, but all right. So, okay, Dan, trying to be funny, which is fine. But How about we go to the other call? <laughs> but we're very fortunate that this is our real job. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It's all good. That's why it's 13 live. drum sets, 70 snare drums, 157 cymbals, and a half million dollars of studio equipment. I have a real job. Amen. That one I'm cutting out of the recorded version, but for <laughs> let's take friend, a second call. Our, yeah, let's take a second call and see what other smart ass we got on the line. Oh, here. breathe, oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, let's see who else is uh, who else is on the line. Who do I have in the 205 area code? Hello. Uh, hi. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yes. I hear you great. Who am I talking to? Uh, my name's Ted. Hey, Ted, where are you from? I'm from uh, uh, Alabama. Oh, cool. Alabama. Well, thanks for calling. Uh, let me ask you, do you have a specific, are you a drummer, number one? Uh, no, I, I tend to play more in the piano section. Oh, okay. Cool. So you're a pianist. That's great. Do you have a specific, do you pick your practice time or do you have a specific day or days or times that you practice? Well, you see, I can play you a song right now if you want. Okay, let's let's hear it. Let's Why hear not? It. All right. Yeah, all right, winter. Right, dance, buddy. Yeah. Sorry about this. I just need to put in my keyboard. Okay, go for it. It's an adventure. I know, right? You never know what you can so What happens when you don't have a call screener? <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. Right, here we go. Go for it. Right, you ready? I'm ready. This show. F that's uh, when you're on Twitch. That's what happens. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. We just uh, got 
That's twice. That's funny. I love it. That's great. We got heckled. That's a good day. <laughs> I love it. I don't take myself too seriously. What about you? No. That's funny. <laughs> kids having fun. Uh, we love you, kids. Hey, if we were 12, we would have done the same thing. I would have too. Baba Booey! <laughs> Baba Booey! <laughs> Baba Booey! <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back. <laughs> That's going in the outtakes. We're keeping that in there. We're keeping it. <laughs> So, all right. So let's get over to, um, I love life. Right. Have I told you I love life? <laughs> Have I told you that uh, I'm in, I'm in the process of eliminating stress from my life. It's good. It'd be a good change for you. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. All right. So let's, let's talk about actually practicing. Okay. So when it comes time to actually practice, um, Oh, I, I have something I did not put on the lineup, actually. What you got? Before practice, which is um, actually setting up your uh, your area that you practice mm-hmm. and having all the things that you need. Uh, there's nothing worse than going down to practice and either the book that I'm looking for is not there or the music that I was going to play to is not on my iPad or my in-ears aren't there or um, any number of different things that I would need to actually get started practicing. Throws you off. So what do I do? For 30 minutes, I'm running around with my hair on fire trying to pull all these things together. And then there's 30 minutes of my practice time gone. So actually taking time away from your practice time. Having your space set up, ready to go. Having everything that you need in place. Uh, if, if you need to print something out, if you need to, uh, if you need to have something loaded that you're going to watch or play to, mm-hmm. any of that stuff, you want to make sure that you do all those kind of things. And uh, uh, I'm looking at that call screen and queue right now, and, and my instant uh, reaction is, "Don't do it, Brian." Right. <laughs> keep moving. Just keep keep moving. Moving. If you don't know the area code, keep moving. That's right. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about actually practicing. So eliminating distractions, talking about <clears throat> phones and right. screening cues. And having a dedicated space helps that. Good if your idea. drum set's uh, in the dining room while mom's kitchen, it might, uh, you know. Yeah. Or it, it, it maybe have them turn the TV down. Right. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, one of the first things that I do when I walk in is I immediately eliminate my distractions. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like looking at that screen right now and that call queue is, is a distraction for me. Uh, my phone that's sitting on the floor right now, so I don't look at it while we're in the show. Uh, I, I either turn my phone off mm-hmm. or I put it in the other room. Yeah. Like I put it where I physically cannot hear it buzz. Smart. You're uh, not distracted. Right, right. You know? I don't think about it. Uh, if if the thing is going to go off and buzz and it's in the room with me, there's always that little thing that goes, you really ought to go check that. You really ought to go do something. Like right, that. right. You really ought to go see who that is. It's probably important, Brian. You might want to go check that. <laughs> you might want to answer the 495 area code. Oh, come on. Let's do it. <sighs> let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, let's see if we can little, go three for three on the heckles. Oh, it terminated itself. That's awesome. Okay. Maybe I chased him off. Okay. <laughs> Get off my lawn! Get off my lawn! Okay. So, um... I think you need more of your little brain pill, dude. You're a little cranky. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sleep much. You'll find out why at the end of the show why I didn't sleep very much, though. Um, so, the other thing that I do... Uh, oh, this is beautiful. It's getting good. This is getting good. I oh, wish we could screenshot man, that I number. Tell you what, for people that are watching the live stream, you're going to have a lot of stuff that you're going to you're you're just going to enjoy this with us. For people that uh, that are looking at the recorded version of this, I, I'm going to put this in the outtakes at the end. The number that just popped up is six 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 six. The devil is calling. And he would like to talk about drums. Some kids are having fun today. I, That's I love, funny. I love these kids. This is awesome, dude. though. We're getting heckled from afar. I love, I love it. it. Hey, you know. Somebody's paying attention. Hey, I'll take it. Hey, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was going to I was gonna make a reference to truck stop waitresses, but... All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, so, uh, so the other thing I do, I turn my phone off, yes. and I have this other thing. If you really want to supercharge your practice time, I have this thing called the five minute buffer. Okay. And I will probably have to do it when I go practice. I'm practicing this afternoon. You need to do it now? No, no, I probably need to. (laughs) (laughs) So the way our brains work, uh, they're kind of like a battery. Sure. You you really only have 
a limited amount of charge before the thing's down. Mm -hmm. So I I have this thing called the five minute buffer and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, You can meditate, you can, uh, you can think about nothing. You can sleep. Occasionally I'll take my phone and I'll set the alarm for five minutes from now and I'll just close my eyes knowing that if I do fall asleep in that five minutes, that uh, my alarm will wake me up and let me know it's time to go practice. Mm -hmm. But I take this five minute buffer and it basically clears, clears out my brain cache. So whatever I was thinking about, whatever was stressing me out, whatever I've got to do next, all these different things, I don't have to think about. Uh, They just uh, fall away. Like with people that meditate, they say how they uh, they're mindful of the thoughts that come into their mind and they learn to just push them to the side. Well, I don't even push them to the side. I just drop them. Yeah. So uh, it, however I need to, whether it's concentrating on my breathing, falling asleep. Sure. Just clearing uh, the mind. So when you go into practice, you're focused on that time. Right. So uh, so that I can focus on the rest of this show. I've got it's to got answer you, boy. This, you man. are. I've got to answer. I've got to see who's on the six 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 area code. You don't do it. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Shane. Okay. I'm gonna hit this button. Do it. I'm gonna hit this button. I'm. Gonna... Oh, and right <laughs> as I did it, they jumped out. I love it. Uh, gotcha, kids. All right. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> All right. So clear. Mama your Bowie. Bro- clink. <laughs> Clear. Try doing that for five minutes. You won't think about anything. Your brain will be completely emptied of everything. So I clear. I clear. Should it we just stop and go to lunch? We're good. <laughs> when it's time for you to practice, do you just jump in and start wailing, or do you warm up? What's the first thing you do when it comes time to practice? Yes, I, ju- I generally jump in because once the nice thing I have, I mean, like you walk downstairs, so you, mm-hmm. your buffer totally makes sense. My place, I have a nice walk out to the studio. Oh, yeah. So it kind of, I got land and nice studio and a bar and the whole nine yards yeah. and it's clears your head on the way. Sure. So by the time I get into the room and I sit down behind the kit, I'm ready to go. Yeah. And as far as warm ups, um, you know, I will do all the typical hand, feet exercises, singles, doubles, paradiddles, just warming up, blood flow, getting hands moving. And then depending on what's going on or what show I've got coming up, I'll be, you know, particularly focused on that kind of... Now, do you use a metronome when you're practicing? Yes. You're, yes. When you're doing your warm-ups? Or warm-ups, are you just no. kind of warming, warm warm, up freestyle? Warm, my warm-ups are more moving around the kit, just playing. Um, no. So warm-ups, no. With a click, no. When I really get into, let's say, the second segment of practicing, if you will, right. whether it's practicing with a click, drum machine, or even recorded music, because all recorded music is at this point is done with a click, nice. you're playing in time. Okay. So, yes, when it, you really get into practice time, there's some kind of actual time happening that you can feed off of. Gotcha. Okay. Um, for me, my warmups are, it's the same kind of thing. It's, I, I have a regimen of singles that I do and I alternate, usually I alternate days. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'll alternate, uh, singles on one day, doubles on the next day. Okay. And I'll mix them up singles one day, doubles the next day. But my wild card thing that I do is some days I'm working duple meter mm-hmm. and Maybe the next day I'll work in a triplet meeting. Sure, sure. So I'll do single strokes as 16th notes and 32nd notes one day. Right. Uh, or as uh, eighth note triplets and 16th note triplets the next day. Uh, and then there'll be a day when I'm doing double stroke warm ups um, in 16th notes and 32nd notes. And when I'm really feeling like I'm really going to stretch, then I'll do double strokes in triplet. Are you doing meter, so? Are you meter. specifically doing these on a pad on your snare drum? Are you doing it around the kit? You know, or? I, I've got to where I don't do. I only do practice pad time if I'm in front of the television or I can't get in front of a kit because so much of my my focus this year has been on touch mm-hmm. and the sound I'm getting out of the drums. That for me, the practice pad in my Regimented practice time is a waste of time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I took some lessons from Chester Thompson about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And he gave me a bunch of these single double exercises that that has become my warm up. So those things that I do with singles, doubles, double meter, triple meter are all based on exercises I got from him. And I start really slow, like 
58 beats a minute. I just pick this arbitrary, weird, slow sure. thing. And then I'm doing slow, medium, peak tempo. Right. And I'm always trying to push that peak tempo. Every day it's one click on the metronome. Just one click. And I would agree that practicing slow yeah. to increase overall speed is much better than trying to practice fast, hoping you're going to get faster. Well, on your point about the practice pad thing, yeah. one thing I recommend people do, instead of always doing your hand exercises like on your snare drum or uh -huh. a pad, do it on your floor tom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, a t or any tom because it, it has more give. Yeah. So you actually have to work on your rebound more. Right. And you'll find that you'll be able to move around the kit with singles and doubles more fluently if you don't practice on such a hard surface. Just a little nugget. Yeah, well, and if, if, if sound anyway. and time are important to you, the duration of the note has a lot to do with your perception of time. Right. And if you're working on clarity and you're working on the the actual articulation of the note, articulation of the note on a floor time is a lot different than a snare drum. You know, because you hit the snare drum and unless it's, even if it's got a little buzz afterwards, the note's gone. Yep. With a floor tom, it's still there. It's still there. It's Especially hanging out. Especially if you're practicing at 60 BPM. Yeah, <laughs> it's hanging out for a while. So when you start to do 16th notes and even 32nd notes, you fight for clarity. Mm -hmm. And so when, what I find when I'm doing that is I have to sort of adjust where I'm playing on the drum. I'll actually kind of pull towards the edge of the drum sure. a little bit more, and I'm, I'm trying to dry the drum out a little bit, but I'm really listening for the articulation. And I'm trying to let that be my my center so that I can keep the time centered and not the full duration of the note, especially when you're playing faster notes. Sure. If you if you're if you're listening for the full duration of the note, then it can tend to slow you down a little bit. So yeah, I'm I'm really when I go and do that kind of work on the floor time, I'm really listening to the attack and the placement of the initial part of the note and trying to as much as I can dry out the drum a little bit just by the way I play it. So that for those faster notes, uh, there's less there to get in the way of the next note. For um, for anything that's a big fat note, obviously middle of the drum, really trying to pull the sound out of it. But yeah, definitely. So you were talking though in in talking about just ideas about how to practice. I find I especially nowadays I spend more time practicing slow than I do fast. Mm -hmm. You can only play as fast as you can hear. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Yeah, and you can, you can only react as fast as you can hear. And you can't develop new ideas at breakneck speed. You have to play them at this super slow tempo so that you can really hear the way that it unfolds in the time. And then once your ear gets comfortable with that and your ear gets comfortable with hearing that phrase at this really slow tempo, then you just compress the time a little bit bump it up on the metronome a little bit. Mm -hmm. And over time, I, I found, especially the past year, I've made greater strides in being able to um, assimilate ideas because I'm able to graduate how I hear things. I'm able to take something really slow, and I've actually gotten faster at hearing faster because at least at this point in my playing – most ideas that are new to me are not hard to play because my hands can't do them or my feet can't do them. The musculature is there. Mm -hmm. It's my brain doesn't process it. And so if I get down to that 40 or 50 BPM and I spend time in that and I really work that idea down there and gradually move it up, I find that at first maybe I'm moving it up two clicks, three clicks. But then very quickly, like by the time I get from 58 to 68, I can jump from 68 to, to 80 pretty quick. Right. And then 80 to 100 is not a big leap. you understand what you're doing, right. Yeah, 80 to 100 is not a big leap. If I kind of stall in the middle, it's just a check. Sure. Yeah, you know, so check that it's idea. It's like slowing down records back in the day. Yeah. You can hear the phrase yeah. and it makes sense. Yeah. So then by the time, by the, and, and I don't really go crazy with my tempos. Uh, I go usable. Everything for me is what's musically usable. Everything's uh, at 240. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it really is just a matter of, I only, I only really get to the point with speed to where um, musically, both in terms of the music that I normally play mm -hmm. and the way that I hear, what makes sense? 
I mean, I could spend another six months on an idea and go for 350 right. and probably pull it off. But the chances but of how, ever doing that. But on how many gig gigs are you doing where you right. needed at that speed? None. Zero. Sure. Right. None. So there's I, practical I, application yeah. in all of this. So what are some what are some other things that you do to help you with processing a new idea? Well, that's one. Slowing it down. Um, if if you need to transcribe it, write it out. You know, if it's a mm -hmm. you know, for example, a Vinny lick or a Dave Weckl lick or something, you're trying to get. Because they're very specific about their hands and where they come out of the, so it sets up the next part of the right. phrase. So same kind of thing, being able to slow down a phrase and hear it. Because like you said, it's kind of like speaking. We can only say words as fast as we can say them. No, the transcription stuff, do you do that in your practice time or you do it before your practice time? When do you usually have that happening? If it's something like that, it would be, before the practice time gotcha. because you, you know, let's say you've been on YouTube and you saw something you're like, Oh, what is that? I want to borrow that. Um, so yeah, I would have that transcribed out and then I'd sit there and, you know, play it about a third the speed and try to figure it out. <laughs> Go back to when we talked about online learning and you use the, the half speed or the quarter speed on right. YouTube. Yeah. It's great for really being able to pick that stuff out. Um, the one thing I didn't have time to prep that I'll show on the recorded version of this is uh, with trans transcription. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do the same thing. I take time outside of my regular practice time. Uh, I usually squirrel away 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. It's my replacement for watching TV shows. Sure. Where, I, where I'll actually sit down and I'll have something. Like right now I'm transcribing a Kenny Barron tune, a recording of Invitation mm -hmm. that has Lewis Nash playing drums on it. Nice. And so uh, I'm very systematically going through. And because the material is so dense and there's no repetition, it really, I mean, in 20 minutes I might get three bars. If right, I'm lucky, sure. If I'm lucky. Yeah, because you're trying to get catch the nuance of right. the touch, the yeah. phrase. Trying to make sure that the rhythms are the right. The sounds. All that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, and then trying to get some context with the, the stuff. I, that and I would even before. say that even watching stuff, whether it's on YouTube or whatever, you know, that's part of practicing as well because you're absorbing, you're listening. I think listening is a big one. Yeah. A lot of people don't listen. A lot of people go into a practice room and just only focus on technical things. Well, you right. still got to listen. You still got to be able to play with musicians. And if, the more music you listen to, the more variety, the more things you try, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're in your practice space playing with some recorded music, that's the time to try out your new fill or your new phrase or solo over the, the chorus or the verse. What Just right. start learning where your time is, how to come out in the one, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can take a, any tune and work on these kind of things. But I think a lot of people don't miss out on that. They're so focused on just exercises or rudiments that they let's put stop, a pin in that stop playing let's put musical a pin in that. I, I want to talk about that in the in the, the after period okay. of, of our practice definitely i want to come back and revisit that because there's there's some nuggets in there that we can definitely we can definitely look at now do you when you're working on an exercise mm -hmm. do you time yourself the the amount of time you do something or, or are you that regimented or are you just are you just doing it as long as you feel like doing it um time like i i, I would still put it in like say i have the hour okay mm -hmm. If there's something I'm specifically working on, I would put still keep it in like say the 20 minute segment. Right. So if it's a phrase or if it's an eight bar segment of a tune, or you know, I put it on repeat and loop it and just really give it that focus, so that because I think there's a point too where you can burn yourself out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, if you did that one thing for an hour, you're gonna you'll get bored with it, sure. and then you'll never revisit it. Right. Right. So if you keep it, at least that's the way my brain works. Well, and and we'll hit we'll hit that in a second in the brain overload part. Sure, of it. there's there that's definitely something where it especially if you don't plan enough, you you can get stuck on the one thing and and actually make it boring to practice. Yeah, because you didn't really have any other. I mean, ideas the end game is that you have to enjoy what you're doing. Sure, and you're having fun and you're making music at the end of the day. I mean, because you could have the greatest hands in the world, but if you never leave your room, nobody ever knows. All right, three one three. Who am I talking to? Uh, how you doing, man? What's going on, fellas? Hey, how are who, who are we talking to? Uh, this is TJ, man. I'm calling from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit in the house. How's it going, TJ? Yes, indeed. Well, yes, indeed. What's going on, fellas? Oh man, just talking drums. 
Hey man, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to commend you guys, man. I'm enjoying the job you guys are doing, man, and uh, keep the show up. And uh, I wish I could be like you guys, man. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank appreciate you for that. calling in and saying something. We appreciate that. So what what about you as far as practicing? Is there anything anything specific that you wanted to, to drop on us as far as some knowledge, some some key thing that you do that helps you with your practice time? Well, I, when I when I practice, man, I kind of like to um. I like to practice on my pad. I stay in an apartment. Okay. So I, I got like the drum pads. Yep. Yeah, I got the drum pads and stuff. So I uh I practice on my pads uh pretty often and um between my practices, it might it may sound a little funny, but between my practices, I probably like do like fifteen minutes on my pads and then I uh drop down and do some push ups. Oh, wow. uh, that's something I had got when I was uh, in a marching band. We used to do push-ups all the time. So, yeah, I do push-ups and uh, like 15 minutes here and drop down, do some more push-ups and do some more, you know, practicing on a pad. So that's, that's, cool. that's pretty much how I, how I practice, man. And uh, I may open up the stick control book and try to do some stuff with that, you know, and um that's pretty much how I do stuff, man. Just trying to just better myself, man, with uh, uh, different rhythms and par- parliaments and all that stuff, man. The the whole thing about the push-ups actually kind of plays into something uh, Tony Robbins talks about uh, when you're trying to enhance cognitive processing, that we remember things that we associate with highly emotionally charged moments. Right. That's why, like, when you got the crazy girlfriend, right. uh, you remember so much more about your crazy girlfriend <laughs> than your real calm one. <laughs> Because she kept she kept you emotional, right? right? So so that that stressor of doing push ups, whatever you were practicing right before you did your push ups, if you're especially if you're working on something new, and then you do push ups, right. the stressor of that will actually help it lodge in your brain a lot more. Right. That, right. So when you go back to it, it actually your Makes brain it your brain remembers more of it. It and it, it sort of kicks it into like a sixth gear. It's smart. And, it actually doesn't. Work. That's a smart. That's, that's, dude, that's a good a smart, one, TJ. And you're working on your fitness at the same time. That's kudos to For you. Sure, man. Yeah, he, definitely. He got the guns going. That, right. That's my problem. That's why I don't have guns, Shannon. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing push-ups. All right, we're gonna we're gonna borrow your idea, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, man. So, do you have a question for us or anything? I mean, yeah, yeah, I got a question, man. Sure. You, you guys uh, got any like uh, ideas you can throw out there? Like more stuff I can probably practice on or whatnot, or you know, like different different. Uh, drum uh, cadences or something I can probably practice with would it help out a little bit because I always be looking for something new you know are you mostly doing uh, core kind of stuff are you doing drum set stuff What what's your primary area of focus with your drumming I, I usually try to mix it up a lot I do like um, I do like some jazz uh, probably some jazz licks I do like uh, some drum core stuff I do uh, some stuff I used to do in a marching band uh, a lot of like uh uh, five stroke rolls, uh, double strokes, uh, single strokes, six stroke rolls, stuff like that. But uh, I just be trying to incorporate different uh, practices into my uh, plan or whatnot. You know, different uh, combinations. So I was just saying to you guys, what what do you guys do? If I can, you know, give it a try. If you're really trying to open up uh, and and uh, go in a different direction with stuff. Mm-hmm. I like taking things that I know and get as much mileage out of it. Yeah. And and so one one of these little things that I that I've found here more recently in drummers that I like to listen to and I've been trying to unlock the code on right. is this idea of odd odd groupings. Odd groupings. So instead of just pulling an odd grouping out of the air, mm-hmm. take an idea that you already know how to play and either lop a note off of it. Right. So like if you do two on the hands or four on the hands and two on the feet. Right. Yeah, you know, the the four and two combo stuff. Right. You know, uh, like 16 note triples or whatever. Right. Uh, that's how most guys usually play it. Lop off either one of the hand notes in the front. Don't lop off your hand, but the note. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Sometimes I want to lop off my hand. Right. Uh, but, uh, uh, or lop off one of the kick drum notes. Okay. okay. So you make it a five right. beat idea. Right. It's something your brain already knows how to do. You're just kind of giving it a little bit of a 
a, a you're you're twisting the frame a little bit. Exactly. So now take that five B idea and see what music you come up with in that. Or if you add a note, right? You know, if you have a four note idea, right? Uh, either add a note in the hands or add a note in the feet and turn it into an odd group. And then you're doing a little math to see how it works in the course of the bar. Right, right. But uh, that's something that, for me, instantly, I get all kinds of inspiration out of. Right. By something as simple as drop a note, add a note. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool, man. I like that, man. I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate well, that. By all means. And, and, Absolutely. And, and if you get a chance, like... Uh, if you if you have your own YouTube channel, film yourself practicing one of those ideas. Throw it there and uh, and hashtag us dial dial a drummer, and uh, we'll feature you on the show. For hey. sure, absolutely. Thanks for calling in. TJ. I appreciate that, fellas. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? Uh, you want to give him a DVD? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So uh, here's what we're going to do. In, actually. We're, yeah, we're going to send uh, we're going to send you uh, uh, an actual DVD. How would you like that? Oh, man, I love that. Man. And says. Since you're a hands guy, this is a hand techniques and rudiments DVD from Hudson Music. Oh yeah. Who 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 all's on this DVD, Shannon? It's got Steve Gadd, Keith Carlock, Steve Smith, Tommy Igo, Zuckerman, wow. Jeff Queen. Man, there's a lot of people on this. This is really yeah, cool. Yeah, it'll work, man. Yeah, it's just a it's a whole grab bag of all kinds of ideas. So uh, since we don't have a call screener today, can you do me a big favor when you get a chance? Sure. Can you email me, uh, dialadrummer at gmail.com? Yeah, I can do that. Just shoot me an email and just say, hey, man, I'm the guy that called in on the show. Here's my mailing address. We will send this out to you today. Man, I appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that, man. Well, Absolutely. thanks for calling. Yes, Detroit sir. in the house. Uh, definitely, man. Well, have uh, a good day, man. Thank you. One more thing before we, we, we hang up, man. Yes, I sir. wish I can, uh, like, be just a steady drummer like you guys, man. I mean, I love drumming. I've been a drummer since I was three, man. But yeah. I got the wife and I got a kid, so I can't just do it like you guys do it, man. I got to work a nine-to-five job. Yeah. But I wish I could do that, man. Well, you know what? There's a topic for a whole show right there. How to go enough. from? You know what? We're gonna put. We're gonna make that a topic for an upcoming show. Yeah. And uh, and I'll make sure to hold on to your contact information. Maybe we'll actually we'll call you back yeah. in a few weeks when we talk about that. We'll actually have you on the line and we'll work through some stuff. Maybe that might help you with transitioning from that. Oh yeah. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna write down on the whiteboard right now. Yeah. How to go from uh from a day day job to dream job? How about that? There you go. Hey. That's a good one. Awesome. That's a good show. Man, thanks for getting the brain working. I appreciate you, man. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate you fellas, man. And I will email you. Uh, great. Thank you so much. And we'll get this DVD out to you. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. All right, man. Have a blessed day. You, you too, too, buddy. Bye-bye. And that, Shannon Corey, is why we started this mm. podcast. Absolutely. That's exactly. Put you back in a good mood, too. <laughs> <laughs> Made my life have some sense. No, that's of meaning. nice, and it, it's nice to hear some mates that you know we got some drum core yeah. knowledge and still keeping his hands up. I like the idea of dropping and doing the push ups. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna I'm, I I'm will gonna do implement that, today. that. Now I might only get two push ups. Our buddy Tom. That's what, <laughs> I bet that's what Tom does. I know that's what Tom Knight does. <laughs> That guy does push-ups on top of his push-ups. I know. <laughs> so, uh, that was a great call. I'm in a great yeah, mood yeah, that was now. that a good call. I love that. Thanks so much, TJ, man. Thanks for calling. And from Detroit. That's awesome. Man, we are out of the Southeast now with this show, Shannon. That's awesome. So, uh, let me ask you, with your practice time, do you record yourself at all? Sometimes, yes. Is there a reason why you would, or what do you do with that stuff? Um, a lot of it's to listen back. Yeah. You know, and, and to listen to like you were talking about earlier the duration of the notes yeah. how you're hitting the drum um you know the advantage you and i have with recording studios is it's fairly easy for us to record everything we're doing yeah um but i don't you know i record more shows yeah. you know on the little q2 in from zoom yeah. and watch it and just kind of see where you're at because you know when in real time when you're playing you think you've it sounds a certain way and then you watch it and it's like, ah, it was close or, you know, phrase could have been a little bit slower. Or, you know what I mean? Those little I was so details. good in my mind. Yeah, in my mind, <laughs> I was doing my best weckle, but, you know, not so much. But, you know, uh, you get the idea. So I would say 50-50 as yeah. far as 
recording my practice time. Yeah. I just kind of feel like that's my quiet space and I'm in there in my zone doing, you know, cause it's focused and I know what I'm working on. Right. I don't necessarily need to watch it or hear it. Right. But like I, you know, shows, I like to record and really see if the finished product is coming out, you know, all the stuff you work on, if it's actually translating to the show. But nowadays, how about yourself? It, oh yeah, like <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm course. recording our recording. <laughs> <laughs> I record myself recording myself recording myself practice. Right. <laughs> no, I mean it helps that my practice room is set up that both kits are all mic'd, and if I want to multi-track it, I can. I don't. I don't do that as much uh, on a day-to-day basis. I do that when I'm specifically working on a piece of music, and I need to. I need to go back and really. Listen and you to do stuff. something that's kind of cool. Brian has enough space where. He's got three different setups. So yeah. he's got like the jazz kit, the rock kit, and then his all-purpose kit, which is kind of cool because they're all tuned differently. They've got yeah. a different vibe, a different feel. So if you're working on something, you can – I'm more of the – I like the same kit for everything. Yeah. Kind of a different school. We can yeah. get into that topic another time. We, we will. That's definitely that's, – that's one of those that's a whole hour in itself. But, I, yeah, all the kits that I can, can practice on here are all mic'd up, and they're all attached to some kind of recorder. So I can hit record. But what I tend to do most of the time, because I really want the same perspective that someone that would be giving me a lesson – would have of my playing. I've got a few different variations of the different zoom cameras. I just picked up the new one. Is the Q2 in, in the new one? Yes. The, the, one. the black one with the, yeah, little, it looks like about a, this big, it looks like a friar, of, yeah. you know, like, like, like he belongs as a priest in the Catholic church little or chess something. Piece. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's a chess piece. Right. Hey, you're much funnier than me. <laughs> Jeez. I was going for, I was going for a joke. You had the better punchline. Right on. Um, <laughs> just trying to help you out. But that's, I tell you what, the audio quality on all the Zoom recorders is it's the unbelievable. absolute best. That Q2N is yeah. unbelievable. As long as you're not clipping it, you're yeah. great. Whatever it sounds like in that spot is what it's going to sound like. And I, I have found that just leaving it with its own audio and not put, sending anything to it sounds better. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's... It's an amazing turn device. The, turn the auto gain off yep. and then dial in the, the input gain just enough to where uh, you're not clipping, but you're getting plenty of level. It, whatever it sounds like right there at that spot is what you sound like. Right. It, is, it can be the scariest thing in the world. <laughs> but for a device that captures video and audio, it's an amazing... They really stepped up the level of quality of video with that new one. Mm-hmm. And it's 160 bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And you know, if you hit it on a day at Guitar Center when you get one of those 20% off coupons or something you know, in your email, it's even cheaper. Right. And man, if, if I were the age of the kid that heckled us today, you can mow like six lawns. Right. And buy uh, an HD quality video camera, an HD quality audio recorder, and hear and see exactly what you sound like and what you look like. Right. Then you put that against all the guys that you watch on YouTube or DVDs or whatever, and you really have a very good barometer. Like, here's where they are in the continuum, and here's where I'm at. Right, right. And then you just have to figure out how to get to where that is. So, yeah, I, what I do, I tend to throw up uh, one of the Zooms. Sometimes I'll throw up a GoPro or something like that. Um, cause I've got a few different options and, uh, what I'll do is I just immediately throw that footage onto a hard drive. And because I'm kind of OCD a little bit, I've got a file system where it's all folders and dates. Right. And so, and I don't immediately go back and look at it, but once a week I'll go back and I'll parse through some of the footage. Part of it is to find problems to isolate things that I can, that I need to really look at and work on. But it's more to see progress from Monday to Friday Mm -hmm. or Monday to Saturday. So if I started on an idea, like um, I just threw uh, up on my Instagram this week, uh, me playing Soul Power, Clyde Stubblefield Groove from the James Brown tune. You know, I recorded that. What you see on Instagram, 15 minutes after I learned how to play it. And what I'll do is I'll record every day that I work on it. And five, six, eight, ten days from now, I'll go back and I'll look at that one. Right. Look at the first one. Look at the last one. See the progress. Or see where I didn't progress. Right. And in some cases, that happens. Like, I'll think, in again, between my ears, man, I'm making such progress. This is awesome. Right. I'm Clyde Stubblefield. And then you see it or hear it, and you're like, oh. And not so much. <laughs> I'm just Clyde Stumblefield <laughs> is what I, <laughs> that's all I am. That's where it's really valuable for me to be able to see and hear is you know, over the course of a week or two or a month, am I really making progress 
or am I tricking myself into thinking that I'm making progress just because I've been working on this thing? Uh, so yeah, I'll go back and look at those. The great thing about audio and video recording yourself uh, in that way, in a way that's good quality, good sound, is I can also take a little quick snippet of it. If you got a Mac, this is like five mouse clicks and you're done. I'll take like a 120 seconds and I'll uh, I'll toss it up on a private YouTube video. You know, I'll just upload it to YouTube to a private link and I'll send it to either somebody I'm taking a lesson from on that particular thing or I've got four or five different guys I've taken lessons from over the past 10 or 15 years that I continue to have a dialogue with and I'll just toss them the link. Be like, here's two minutes of me doing this idea. This is something you're really good at. Um, what can I do to fix this or right. make it better? Or And those guys are always good about just either calling me or shooting a quick email or a text message and going, yeah, here's what I noticed. Do this one thing, fix this. And instantly I get improvement out of sure. that. It's one of those things where if it's something I'm really digging deep on, really diving deep into an idea, I'll, uh, and I've sent a couple of things to somebody, and they've got some really good, they're sending me really good feedback about what to fix, I'll just schedule a lesson. You know, with, with Justin Barnes, if I'm working on a, on a jazz idea and I send him something and he's got some great feedback, and I go, you know what, if I had an hour or two of his time, I could probably level up two or three notches. Sure. Then I will. I'll schedule some time in the next week and go take a lesson and and really focus on that. And and he will have seen what I've been working on. Right. So we're not starting from Zero. square one. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not just dropping into the room and we'll only see you do it. He's been watching it right. the whole time. Because you had a dialogue going yeah. the whole time. So, so that, that audio and video is very, very important. Um, one last thing I wanted to hit during the practice session itself is we touched on it a second ago is the idea of brain overload and really what people don't realize the way our brain works and i'm gonna have some good resources for you at the end of this show to help teach you how our brain works so that you can optimize your practice time when we're bored what we've really gotten to is a point where our brain is full on what it can do with that piece of Information. Information. Mm -hmm. So if you take that one lick and you're playing it for 40 solid minutes, you're going to get bored. Right. Your brain just says, I can't do anything else with this. Right. So uh, there's some things that I do that uh, in the course of my practice time that seem counterintuitive that actually help sustain my ability to concentrate and work on ideas over the course of an hour or two hours. So if I'm working on, let's say I'm working on a particular um, a five-note group right. idea. I'm ripping a Vinny thing off. Mm -hmm. I may do it for about six and a half minutes, and when I start to feel that thing of where my brain's checking out and I can't concentrate on it, I'll do one of two things. I'll either go to the bathroom or uh, refill my drink or something. I'll I, and I keep it to a couple of minutes. I'll do like something. Like a pause button. Yeah, yeah, it's like I hit the button and pause what I'm doing, pause what I'm thinking about, find something else to get me off the throne, or I'll practice an idea that's somewhat related but nothing to do with what exactly what I'm so doing. So going back seems fresh again. Yeah. yeah makes a lot of sense. So, uh, and, and if I'm working on, let's say I'm working on say Brazilian stuff. Um, I find that if I change my focus, like if I'm working on a Brazilian idea, like a Samba or a Partido Alto idea, and I start to get a little bored with it, I, it, I change my focus. Mm -hmm. So maybe all I do is I just focus on my right foot. Maybe I'm just trying to, instead of just go, 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 Maybe I'm trying to do like a real certo and 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 mess with the articulation of the bass drum. Right. Like trying to mute the second note out. Sure. Yeah. Or mute, like just let the beater rest against the head just enough to mute it. Some weird thing that I have to hyper focus on. But it changes Everything you're thinking. Changes your perception all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, or maybe it's the right hand pattern. Uh, maybe I'm doing something in the right hand that I want to drill down on. And so I'll just let the rest of it run on autopilot. And I'll focus on that one thing. And it's amazing if you zoom in and zoom out. Zoom in and zoom out. Um, macro, micro, 
macro, micro, how much further your brain will go before you hit the threshold. Right. Because you're just you're just refocusing it's the lens. Like runners that will walk for a little while and then sprint for a distance, yeah. walk, right? Reengages. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you you burn more calories that way. Right. You know, by by mixing up the pace of it. Totally, totally pulls from that so let's uh, let's talk about uh after the practice session because um, the way our brains work for people that don't know uh when we work on a brand new idea our brain doesn't stop when we physically stop doing that thing or when we stop thinking about the idea it's our true. brain keeps going yeah. that's the great thing about the way our, our brains are set up is that they will continue to process information even after we've put it down. Mm -hmm. And they need that time. So what are some things that you do when you're away from the kit, in between your practice session time, that help enhance what you're doing? I like to listen to a lot of music yeah. afterwards mm -hmm. and then start thinking about these ideas or these phrases on top of whatever it is, yeah. whether it's a Prince track or Chicory or whatever, whatever yeah. you happen to be listening to. Yeah. Um, and just start trying to implement it in your brain musically, where it would work, how it fits, right? you know, because in different genres, it could sound like a totally new thing. Oh, yeah. You know, like you're talking about dropping a note or adding a note. That's a re really valuable thing because you can take a phrase and, okay, say so you were working on it, let's say in a rock context, yep. but you throw it in a funk fusion thing and it really works. Oh, yeah. You know, so yeah. I just like to, you know, and again, I like to listen to a lot of different stuff because mm -hmm. it, it helps with the creativity too. Right. Is there a comment over there in the, uh, I see, does that say Eric Snipes over in the Facebook thing there? It says he wants one of those DVDs. Oh, what's up, Eric? <laughs> hey, Eric. Good to see you, buddy. We should give him this one because he totally doesn't do this. <laughs> yeah, double bass drumming. Eric, you want a double bass DVD? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We can't give it to him, though, because that's only for right-handed drummers. Oh, then there's that. Uh, you don't get a DVD, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Eric's better with a single kick than a lot of people I know. That's for sure. So. That's for sure. Well, uh, one thing about listening to music and you know, there's two ways you can kind of hit this. You can either hit music, like if I'm working on Brazilian stuff, I may have a Brazilian playlist in Spotify that I'm listening to actual authentic Brazilian music um, to help help me continue to process the drum stuff that I'm doing in a musical situation. That that helps. That sort of supercharges because it gives context for your brain. So uh, there are a ton of drummers that that I talk to that you know, they talk about wanting to learn to play jazz drums. Man, I just want to learn to swing and bop and do all this stuff. And one of my first questions is, well, do you like bebop music? you like swing music? And they're like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're like, yeah, I don't listen to Boney James or I don't listen to um, Grover Washington. Right. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, you might want to skip the jazz yeah. <laughs> if that's your idea of jazz. You have to like the music yeah. that you're trying to because if you don't, you're not going to engage no. in putting in the time to get good at it. There's something about really being fascinated by a style of music that will supercharge what your brain will do because you get captivated by it. Sure. So I'll have, like, I've got a couple of different uh, Brazilian, I mean, authentic Brazilian music playlists in my Spotify. I've got some uh, fast swing, medium swing, slow bluesy swing playlists. I'll find music that's specific to the kind of stuff that I'm working on because and that's something we didn't talk about in the pre and during. It's my opinion, may not be everybody's opinion, that if you're practicing something, unless it's just something that's fun you want to do, like double bass drumming at 320, right, right. <laughs> everything you practice should be rooted in some kind of musical impetus. Totally agree with that. Either a drummer that you've heard that you absolutely love, or a style of music, or a song, or or trying to something. achieve a gig you're trying to get, or yeah. you know, because what you practice goes a lot to the gigs you will get. Practice for the gig you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. That's a that's a put that one at the bottom of the screen, Brian. That's my yeah. note to no, myself. But like yeah. if you you know you if you're want. the guy saying, hey, I want to learn jazz, but I ultimately only want to play rock tunes. It's good to have some diversity, but you're really not going to put in the time to learn how to swing with nuance 
when all you want to do is play fast. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and there are plenty of other things in the genre you love that you probably haven't focused on. You should probably spend time on. You Agreed. get a lot more mileage out of that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, definitely listening to music, uh, you know, watching videos. We've talked in one of our other episodes about the different digital online platforms, but you know, watching videos of, of players that you dig uh, helps give you context. Mm-hmm. That's so much of it. Uh, find players that are actually in the wild that are either on recordings in the studio or, or live videos or some kind of thing where they're interacting with other musicians so that you have a context for these ideas. Otherwise, it's just an athletic exercise. Well, and drumming's cool, too, because it's one of the few instruments that everybody really does play so differently mm. in the way that our brain is wired and the way we attack or hit or just approach the instrument. So it's really cool. I enjoy going on YouTube and watching or Facebook when people post a solo or this or that, because it's, it's fun to see where they're at and Mm -hmm. what they're thinking and how that, you know, it's, it's constantly listening. Like I said earlier, that's the big part. Speaking of solos to watch, I'm going to interrupt as a non sequitur. uh, Non sequitur. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Makes you sound very important. (laughs) Uh, There's a great video of you playing a solo at a gig you did this week. Thank you. uh, We're going to make sure that it hits the Dial Drummer uh, Facebook page this week. Thank you, sir. And uh, make sure you guys check that out because this guy can play some drum solos, you know. And um, so, yeah, that that's definitely one of those that uh, having that thing that you're watching that inspires you. Uh, maybe somebody will watch your drum solo and find some stuff in there that inspire them, and they'll have something that they can go and practice right. a, as a result. So um, in talking about how our brain works, uh, one of the non-intuitive strategies that, that I suggest that people do that they don't understand until they put it into practice mm-hmm. Um Our brain, like I said before, our brain works on things that we're doing while we're doing them, but then it also works on things after we're finished for that period of time. So you have to walk away from this stuff. And uh, there's some great studies about how our brain processes uh, in intervals of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, links to some some books that will help you with... uh, some of the research on this, but um, there, I, I, I don't practice the exact same idea every single day. No. Because uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is let my brain have some time to grind on its own, uh, aside from me doing it. And, and there's some great research that says, you know, when you learn a new concept, there's a specific period of time when you need to revisit it to keep it grinding. If you want your sure. brain to work for you, If you want it to work when you're not working, uh, there's uh, an interval right after you learn something that's within a few hours, another interval that's within about a day, and then you just continue to stretch the time. Uh, I've noticed with uh, some of the jazz stuff that I've been working on, stuff that I've worked on a year ago that I've purposefully put down, Mm -hmm. that I immediately pick it up a year later, and I really haven't thought much about it. Maybe I've played things that are like it, but my brain has continued to work on it, and I came back at the right interval to reprioritize it, and all of a sudden, I actually played it better. Sure, you're more engaged, and it just makes sense. Yeah, my my brain did some work for me while I was focusing on this other stuff that I could never have threaded that needle. Sure. Well, and sometimes working on with it, right? Sometimes working on something completely different. Yeah. When you do revisit an idea, it all it all works together. Yeah. It's like the alphabet. You don't just spend a year repeating letter A. Right. You know, you got to go through the whole. Well, you didn't. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I did. I just did A and B. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a type A. I just stayed on the A. I just stayed on the A. I don't want to be a Z. I don't want to be last. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you're not first. You're last. Uh, all right. So, uh, if I could, um, I want to close out with uh, with three resources that people absolutely ought to, ought, ought to check out. It's good stuff to. It's one thing to sit and kind of pontificate sure. about how to learn and how to how to best practice something and all that stuff. And and we should probably preface too that these are our ideas, and even Brian and I, who are completely different. In the way we approach how we play our practice, I can learn a lot from him. He can learn a lot from me. That's the cool thing about even openness discussion is that 
we're not saying our way is the right way or the right, wrong no, no. way, but it, it, it can certainly help. And hopefully if it inspires or helps you and you have questions, please yeah. let us know. Yeah, please. By all, all means. Right. So there's three books that if, if you check them out, will help you. And they're, none of them are about drumming, right. but they're all about how to learn anything uh, and how to learn a way that scientifically will uh, actually help you see progress. Uh, one of them is a book called The Art of Learning by Josh Waiskin. Josh was, one. he was the, the guy that they actually uh, wrote the movie in the book Searching for Bobby Fischer about. Mm-hmm. He was he was a, a world champion chess player as a kid. And then later on, he got into some martial arts and some other things where he was an, a world champion in those things. And there's a lot of other things he's tackled. He's written a great book called The Art of Learning that really digs deep into how we learn the things that we learn and what processes really really work best mm-hmm. to assimilate information quickly and to retain more of it so that we don't shed stuff. Right. Um, another one is called Made to Stick. It's the Science of Successful Learning by Peter C. Brown. Another great book that's all rooted in science about how the brain works and how certain strategies can actually make it easier to learn things and um, give you a higher retention of the stuff that you take into your brain. You, you've heard the phrase that uh, that guy, man, he's forgotten more than I ever knew. <laughs> yeah, that's that. The whole idea here is let's don't forget any of it if at all possible. Right. You know, let's know more and constantly stack on top of it and know more. Uh, and then the other one, which the ideas in this third book were actually popularized by a different author, a guy named Malcolm Gladwell. But uh, he got all of his information for his book, Outliers, and and a lot of his research from a psychologist uh, that's down in Florida. His name wouldn't tell you that he's from Florida. But uh, a guy named Kay Anders Erickson. Erickson's done a ton of research over the past few decades on um, deliberate practice and purposeful practice. And uh, the 10,000-hour rule that everybody talks about now, that thought came from this guy's research. Gotcha. He finally put a book out because he was tired of people getting it wrong. <laughs> and the, the, and the name of the book is Peak, Secrets from the New Science of Expertise. It's a little dry. The other books, Josh Waitzkin's book is fascinating. Yeah, it's a good one. Kay Anders Erickson's book's a little dry, but if you just hang with it, the stuff that's in that book a lot is of incredibly, knowledge. incredibly important to know how to structure how you learn uh, in a way that's going to get continual progress, that's going to help you to avoid boredom, help you retain more, and just make faster strides. That That's so much of it. So, um, so I, I definitely want to recommend those things to you. Now, we're going to try something this week. All right, let's try. Uh, last week, we tried the Brian put some ear monitors out thing. And uh, and right, my, right now, my life is about experimentation. So, if you're this far into the discussion, you're an hour and 20 minutes into this podcast, and you're still fascinated, and you you, you go, but I, I need more strategies. I want more actionable content on what I can actually do to get better. I'm going to do an online masterclass downstairs in the studio that's here. Nice. We're going to do a multi-cam. It's going to be five or six cameras. Um Fully mixed professional sound, so professional video, professional sound. I'm going to do a supercharge your drum practice masterclass. It's going to be two hours. Uh, I'm going to go through some different things. We're going to talk about three practice regiments that you can swap between that are going to open new possibilities. They're going to stimulate your creativity, and they're going to help you avoid boredom. There are different modalities you can switch between that keep you moving forward, um, but allow your brain some variety so it uh, it keeps processing and avoids that burnout of that boredom. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about how to practice any exercise using a very, very specific method based on some of the things in these books and some other research uh, that helps you achieve immediate, measurable improvement. And it actually fosters the ability to retain for longer periods of time and retain more information. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to talk about how to strengthen your internal clock. We're going to talk about how you can turn uh, some bland rhythms and stickings that might be boring 
into very musical chunks of information, vocabulary that you can actually go out and use in music, and ultimately how we turn these mundane things uh, from dull practice into some very creative inspiration. Keep them fresh. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you, because I'm all about actionable steps, I'm going to give you some uh, hand and foot warm-ups that help increase the usable speed that you have, what's usable musically. It's going to uh, ensure some sonic consistency. It's one of the things that I see as the main difference between a hobbyist drummer and a professional drummer is consistency. So some exercises that will ensure a high level of sonic consistency and help you build your physical dexterity. And uh, a whole lot more topics. Uh, we're also going to do in that uh, live master class, we're going to do uh, a live Q&A session. So I've got uh, a whole bunch of content we're going to cover in that two hours. And about a quarter of that time is going to be Q&A. Right. So for about 30 minutes, I'm just going to answer people's questions and give you actionable things that you can do as you're in the practice room, specific to questions that people that are there in the live masterclass are going to ask. Uh, I've got some downloadable worksheets nice. that uh, you'll be able to actually uh, plan some things, get some structure, um, actually have some goals that are your goals, not my goals or your teacher's goal, your personal goals on what your practice time is meant to do for you, as well as actual exercise oh, things good. you can practice uh, and if for some reason you can't uh, attend the live webcast master class when it happens uh, if you buy a ticket for this uh, master class there are unlimited replays okay. so if you if you miss the live thing it's totally you didn't cool it. you didn't nice. miss it okay you just won't uh, so you won't you, be able to ask any what are you gonna live. charge for this uh, for two hours of my time two hours of your time. Four dollars and ninety nine cents. That is a whopping two dollars and fifty cents an hour, kids. <laughs> I'm gonna get rich, <laughs> rich. <laughs> no, if you were to, if you were to come here and take a lesson from me for two hours, it'd be one hundred and fifty bucks, right? Seventy five bucks an hour. Uh, but because we're doing this in a master class format, and because I really want a lot of guys to be able to get this information. Um, in a real low friction way, we're making it really, really affordable. So for uh, if you'll go to dialadrummer.net slash practice, that's going to take you to a page where you can uh, sign up. Yeah, you can see all the information about the uh, the master class. You can sign up. You can pay your four ninety nine, and you're in. Now there's a limited number of seats. Uh, we've capped it at a certain number because I want to be able to do a really good Q and A. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we can, uh, in a live environment, really get to people's questions. And if there's a thousand people watching, it's virtually impossible to do sure, that. Sure. So there's a limited number of seats. They're going to go fast. And um, thanks to a few of the um, companies that we have alignments with, that I've talked with, that are doing some things in the future with the show, yep. they're also going to do some things with the Masterclass. Nice. So we just might have some giveaways. So your four ninety nine may just net you anything from, I don't know, a $20 t-shirt to, who knows, a $40 DVD. Just go to dialdrummer.net slash practice and you can sign up for that masterclass that's awesome. online and uh that's pretty much man we don't have any more callers we don't have any more hecklers that's a, that's a good day that was a good day i think we covered a lot of stuff and hopefully you got a lot of value out of this we appreciate you tuning in, like always. For sure. If you're not already, make sure you follow us on all the social networks, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we're dial -a Drummer pretty much everywhere. If you'll go to uh, dialadrummer.net slash YouTube, we would like for you, if you would please, do us a big favor. Follow us or subscribe to us right. on YouTube. Once we get to 100 subscribers, then we can get the dial -a Drummer uh, username on uh, YouTube and that helps us level up in our, our branding. Uh, you can also uh, call us during the week. This uh, this call line that people so wonderfully loved using today. 844-833-3786. <laughs> There's a voicemail on that line. So if you've got a question or a comment you want to uh, table with us, you can leave us a voicemail. We'll actually uh, play those on the show in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you can email us, dial a drummer 
at gmail.com. And please, if you got any questions or comments, feel free on any of the social networks to uh, hashtag us at uh, hashtag dial a drummer. Share us with all your friends and uh, make sure you visit our sponsor this week on it and on it.com specifically alpha brain it's something that i take every single day that helps me uh, increase my cognitive function it helps me to remember more retain more focus at a really really deep level it's all natural no weird drugs no weird jittery feeling uh just go to dialdrummer.net slash brain and pick up a month if you don't like it they do an interesting thing i didn't talk about this before they do an interesting thing if you order their product and you don't like it in the first month you just send them an email and go this didn't work for me and they send you your money back you don't even have to send back the bottle Wow. So there's no risk if you take the if it's a you win take, win yeah if you take Alpha Brain and you get absolutely nothing out of it you just send them an email before the the month is up you say this stuff didn't work for me at all they will refund your money and you keep the product cool so right. uh, I love actually love their uh, their Alpha Brain it has done wonders for me the past four almost five years now with my cognitive abilities uh before we get out of here do we have any other questions yeah daniel parker was asking what was the name of the last book oh yeah the last book was peak secrets from the new science of expertise by k anders erickson if you just put anders erickson in uh at uh, amazon.com you'll find it and for anyone that's listened to the recorded version of this we'll have all of this information in our show notes at dialadrummer.net so we'll have links to these books we'll have links to some of the tools that we use Uh, we'll have some tools that we didn't get a chance to talk about that we'll put links to in our show notes so by all means visit dialadrummer.net get all that great information and uh, again man Another week where we just jam pack as much it. information, Show 10. as we've much done, value we've done as we can. We've done ten of these already. That's I incredible. Know. It's fun. It is fun. I love doing this. This is fun. We're, we're going to keep doing as long as you guys will keep coming every single week. As long as you'll keep listening and watching and calling and we emailing. even appreciate the kid that kept heckling. He was yeah, kind of funny. I love it. I love it. Well, I'll take it. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great week. Yeah, you guys keep putting one foot in front of the other, and uh, we're just going to keep practicing, and getting better, man. That's it. We'll see you next week. See ya. flying by the seat of our pants on some things we did good to get through this one (laughs) the reality is sometimes we come up with the topics on the night before yeah we talk about a lot of stuff during the week yeah yeah it's it's a repository we're doing this on top of our normal lives it's not like this (laughs) is the only thing we do that's the crazy part it's like with everything else that's going on for both of us we wedge in the time to until i find some great intern that loves to work for free uh one of us has to sit there for hours with audio and video and I love doing it. Thank you for doing it. Oh man. Hey, you know, I do a great job at it. I I hope, I hope everybody enjoys it and I hope you get a lot of value out of it. It's definitely worth the work. Somebody said something about, yeah, if you guys tighten up the first five minutes, I was like the first five minutes are the whole reason we don't get kicked off of Facebook at this point. You know, (laughs) it's mostly jibber jabber. Uh, We've got stat statistics on everything from the live stream stuff to the recorded stuff that we are hot. Heckling us seems like the best thing in the world. We, we really appreciate you that we are hot. If you, haven't, if you haven't figured it out already, there's a lot of Easter eggs at the end. Stuff that uh, normally you'd cut out of a nice polished show. I kind of stick them at the end. <laughs> All right. You ready? Uh, so, yeah. So, we let this thing run while Shannon and I talk about... It's j- mostly jibber-jabber. Oh, I mean... Well, I'm James actually proud thing. of you for <laughs> spending less time on social media. Man, the time is just so crazy right now. Well, if you work, social media, <laughs> you don't have time for it. Yeah, I don't. I just, I don't. And the little bit of time I do is like, don't cross your legs. That was my note for myself this week. Don't cross your legs. Um,
in another world, that might mean something completely different. <laughs> that was my revelation for this week. I'm such a freaking Boy Scout at this point in my life that it means actual feline pictures. <laughs> Cute little kitties. I don't even have time to be a rock star at this point. I don't look stressed out at all, and you're just as cool as ever. Mike Dorfman's going to have to pay us for that Trick logo eventually when we have enough people. Shout out to Trick Drums and Mike Dorfman. So, yeah, Dorfman. this isn't an advertisement, but uh, go over yes, to Trick Drums' Facebook page and uh, you know, by all means... Hang on, I'm going to pause myself for a second during that thought because you know what I did not do. What'd you do? Not. Satan's Easy. back, everybody. We're going to put oh, Satan stop. on the line here. I love this. Breathe. Welcome, 666 Area Code. Who am I speaking with? Hi. It's the same kid. The show fucked up. <sighs> All right, he's three for three. He's, uh, give, he's persistent. <laughs> nice. Lord. That's for all the kids watching. Freaking kids. <laughs> It's All good right. as long as you don't yell at me. It's one of them days. You yeah. know what? God love them. Uh, so you can uh, go four for four? <laughs> Why not? Let's, oh, gosh. As I was talking about that, this is where I'm going to edit and double back. Sorry, Squirrel. guys. Uh, so you oh, you're prep work. I'm <laughs> proud of you. No, that took you 12 <laughs> hours of time. So after, classic Brian. Yeah. And bonus. You need a lifestyle change that's less stress. <laughs>